Wow, welcome everyone. Today we have a new guide for the Necromancer for the endgame. Now looking behind me, I'm currently trying a different setup with the Blood Moon Breaches, which allows me to be auto-casting two of my curses coming from the minions. And this means we can remove one ability of the Cryptify off the skill tree and then come with Blight. And Blight will provide us with 20% more damage for both minions and also ourselves and also ability to auto-cast Iron Maiden and also Decrypify by having this ability to trigger with the minions. So before we do anything, let's have a look at the replay. I have also swapped in for a wand, which provide me with more lucky hit chance to provide cooldown reduction. So coming over to our replay with tier 104. Now what you can notice with this particular setup is that I want to focus on the ability to reduce cooldowns. And having additional skill slot, let me put down the phone a little bit, having additional skill slot will help because this means more damage. Now in terms of cooldown reduction, what's happening is our minions will be debuffing enemies with Decrypify. And as you deal damage to minions with Decrypify, you will be lowering cooldowns. And notice that my blood miss cooldown is going down extremely fast. And this is something I wanted to do for the players who doesn't have enough cooldown reduction. And, you know, they're saying, oh, it's very hard to get as high as 30 or 40% like you do in the video. So in this particular setup, you have more ways of lowering cooldowns. And especially having a wand as your main one hand weapon, you have even higher lucky hit chance to proc those cooldown reduction. And you can see for majority of the fight, my cooldown instantly goes to zero very quickly. And this allows me to spam, spam my blood mist and deal tons of damage combined with the holy bot potion. Yes, the very OP potion. Now, the highlight of this build is of course the cooldown reduction. And very soon, I'll show you guys the demonstration of infinite blood mist against the boss. Because the minions are cursing the boss, you don't have to cast the creeper five. You have plenty of time to cast one more spell before you go into blood mist, and you're pretty much invulnerable. And this is the highlight of this new adjustment. So coming over to a replay demonstration of the boss fight. Over here, we're going to fight the setting Hive Master. I do believe this boss also summons, but the focus here is the sustainability and also ability to lower my own cooldowns. So as you can see, my cooldown is pretty much always up with Blood Mist. And this allows you to become invulnerable against most of the boss. Because your minions are constantly debuffing monsters and bosses with curses, you have enough lucky hit to trigger the effect. And as long as the boss summons a few minions, you can be doing tons of damage. I have tested, even if the boss doesn't summon minions, as long as you have enough timer and also you're invulnerable, you can take down the boss indefinitely, just because if you get the rotation right, get the skill right, well, your cooldowns are pretty good using this particular combo to be auto-casting the creeper fight. And this will be the biggest highlight for this particular build. And yes, guys, in higher level corruption, you don't want to take damage because one damage or one instance of damage can one shot us. Now, before we jump into the change of gears and also aspects, it is very important, guys, for you to watch the skill rotations, which I explain the changes of how this build will be different from my previous build. There's a big change because you're not casting the Cryptify, you're auto casting it. So make sure you watch the second part of the video for the skill rotations and also the tips on the changes of the playstyle. So coming over to our characters with choice of aspects and also stats. What you can notice is I recommend coming back to my previous video, which I explained all the gears and all stats into more details. So the highlight over here again is having cooldown reduction on the helmet, cooldown reduction on the amulet and also on the catalyst if you can, or on the focus. After that, what you want is you want blood miss cooldown, you want blood miss cooldown, and also blood miss duration if you can. Uh, this pen's have blood miss duration. So both cooldowns and durations will help. And ideally, you want to get blood miss down to 11 seconds or 10 seconds. I was quite lucky to get this one down to 9 seconds because having additional blood miss ranks will help. But if you don't have those, as long as you have some good luck hit chance coming from the weapon and also coming from this particular ring, this will help you to proc the Cryptify. And having the Cryptify over here means you can lower your cooldowns. And this is quite essential to lower cooldowns while minions debuff enemies. Now, because the rest of the gears are similar to the previous build, we don't have to go too much details. What you can notice with the Blood Moon Breaches is that this will provide you with more damage. In terms of the ranks to amplify damage and also the ability to free up one skill slot. 
The skill slot I have freed up, I'll be going to Belight. Belight will slow enemies, dealing damage over time, which means we can proc more lucky hit chance, and also give you and also your minions 20% more damage. Now in terms of the weapon adjustment, what you can notice is I was trying to roll onto the golden damage, but I couldn't get it. And I am going for life, intelligence, and also bonus damage. My previous weapon was a sword that provided 17% more critical strike chance. In comparison guys, I think Lucky Hit is better with a rundown because I want to proc Lucky Hit as much as I can to lower the cooldowns of the Blood Mist. And this could also proc higher chances for your minions to debuff enemies with curses. Now in terms of skill tree, there is a small adjustment because we're going to Blight and this takes 3 points. We'll be taking away 1 point coming from Rip for the extension as we're not using this spell. We'll be going with 3 points over here. Now if you look closely, I have sacrificed some points. I have sacrificed a movement speed over here, and I have sacrificed one point out of the Skeleton Mastery to get enough points over here to give us more Belight and also more damage. Now everything else with the skill tree is pretty straightforward. We are max leveling the Blood Mist and also getting all the benefits from summoning more corpses, dealing more damage, and also making the Darkness spells with Corpse Explosion in conjunction with now auto-casting two of the curses, and this means we're actually auto-casting three skills that's not on the tree, with Decrypify, with Iron Maiden, and also with the Corpse Explosion. We're not allocating any points over here, this is coming from the pens. So here we did get some ranks on the Corpse Tendro for the work cooldowns, and the skills are over here which are the same. Now I have not changed anything in the Paragon, so it's the same as the previous build. Now if you're following the previous guide, it still works perfectly. I still have the gears for the previous videos, which I use the sword, I also use the pens that provide me with damage reduction, and also the boots with more mobility. I had to sacrifice some mobility onto the boots, because this particular pens does not provide armor. We want at least 9200 armor. So I'll show you the guys the combination. So if I swap those two, I'm about 10,000 armor. But if I put this particular pen on and I don't have the boots ready with additional armor, what you're going to do is, it's not enough armor, right? So I had to strip and also make sure I have enough armor. And this is one of the highlights. Now if you're also finding yourself to be a little short of armor, coming over here to more spike armor can give you even more armor. But once you have enough armor, you can unpack this one, come into the damage perks over here, and unpack this one, even go to movement speed. And as long as you have 9,200 9, ish armor, you have 85%, that is enough. And this is the highlight for the adjustment. In case you guys are wondering if the previous build is better or this build is better, I would say that having a round is always better. I'm in the process of getting this round to level 8, and I'm no longer using a sword for the bonus critical damage. It is personal option guys, how you want to mix your gears. You can go with the pants and finding additional armor, or you can go with more defensive pens, both methods will work. You will be dealing a little more damage having Blight on the skill tree, and you will have more consistent debuff if you're actively casting your Decrypify, and this was a previous build. So coming over to a second part, and this is the skill rotation and also the tips. Right away what you can notice is we're not manually casting Decrypify, and this means you need your minions to hit enemies to cast Decrypify. This is actually a different change of style. I used to decrypify monsters before I see them. Now I'll be casting Belight before I see them. I want to stick closer to my minions. You do not want to venture away from your minions because you won't be benefiting from the lower cooldown reduction coming from decrypify. And this is essential for you to make the cooldown reduction lower and also have infinite blood mist. Now during the majority of the fight, what you can see is the rotation is still the same. But compared to my previous game style, I'm not running too much further. I'm sticking with my minions. And you can see how fast the cooldown reduction is getting lowered. Now, the rotation is simple. You'll be casting Corpse Tendril and also Blood Mist. You don't have to cast anything else. You can cast your ultimate army of the dead for a bonus move, for a bonus attack speed, and also to resummon your skeletons. This is extremely helpful to get all your skeletons up after dying to some random damage. And in combination, you're casting Corpse, Ex Corpse Tendril and also Blood Mist, and that's it. Because I want to keep you guys alive, you can cast Blight onto the enemies after you stun them, because you'll be grouped in a pack of enemies and they won't be doing damage to you. So the combination is Corpse Tendril, Blood Mist, Blood Mist, Corpse Tendril. 
and once they're ready to stand, you cast Blight onto them. And that's pretty much for the rotation against most of the monsters. Now there is something I do want to highlight, and this is dying randomly. So yes, my previous playstyle, I would run forward and also then cast the Decupify. But what you can notice now is, because you need to stick onto your minions and also have lower cooldowns with your minions debuffing enemies, if you run forward by yourself and you do have the cooldowns, you will die. <laughs> yes, because we are removing our pens that have damage reduction. And this means that if you run forward too quickly with only minions, you will die. And after dying, I recommend resummoning your skeletons if you can. You can be casting ultimate to resummon them, or you can just be casting manually or automatically with your ring to resummon your skeletons. And again guys, you want to stick with your minions for lower cooldowns. Now coming over to the skill rotation for the boss fight. It's quite straightforward, usually I cast army of the dead so I have maximum skeletons. And then I look at the boss and also if it's summoning monsters. Regardless guys, I'm only doing two rotations. I'm doing Corpse Tendril and also Blood Mist just to be safe. If I feel safe enough, I'll cast Blight onto the boss. And that's pretty much it. You don't see me casting the active Golden spell because I don't want to risk the chance of dying to the bosses. And if the boss is so many monsters, then you take advantage of that. Casting Corpse Tendril will drag them closer to the boss. Now for the cases that the boss is extremely hard, and they're not summoning, you can reset the dungeon and try a different boss. It is much worth it to try a different boss than trying to grind the boss down for over 5 minutes. I have tried it, the boss does not summon, I can grind it down over 5 minutes, but it is very tiring. I'm just pressing two buttons and the boss can't kill me, I can't kill the boss fast enough. But we can do it, even just with the minions without the potion. Now, similar to all the videos, I'll be providing you guys with a replay of all my gears and some stats during this test run. And one funny thing is, during this test run, I actually had the wrong weapon aspects. I forgot to craft the 40% bonus minion damage, and this is not the right one. So even with the wrong stat, I was able to clear this dungeon, because I wasn't dying a lot. I did die twice though. <laughs> so yes, I'll have the entire replay for you guys to have a look. The biggest highlight is to look, have a look at the playstyle and also if this works for you. So hopefully you guys enjoy this build. I'll be updating those builds and also making upgrades for the Necromancer against the Uber Doriel for 200 levels.